Last night, hockey had something happen that, you know, although it has happened in the past before, every time it happens, it's electrified. Mm -hmm. Yep. As soon as the puck was dropped to uh, start the game, all 10 dudes on the ice started fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Love yep. it. Okay. Now, goalies did not, which... We don't. One we, of them tried. We will ask P.K. Subban about, but the Rangers and the Devils last night proved that hockey is the only sport that's left that isn't scared to go ahead and throw some hands. Yeah. yeah. Settle some businesses. You know, a uh, check happened a couple, or not, uh, an elbow to the head happened about three weeks ago from that big, tall 73 fella to the New Jersey Devils player. And uh, since then, there has been a little comeuppance, maybe thought. As soon as the game starts, 10 fights happen. Yep. We'll talk to PK Saban about that and also everything else happening around the hockey world. Who do we need to be watching? Because hockey is awesome. Could you imagine if on an NFL kickoff? What about NBA? NBA, yeah. 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 Uh, opening tip. That happens. Ref throws the ball up, okay? Because that's what – puck drops. Mm -hmm. There's a – there is a puck on the ice there. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody even <laughs> – Start the game. No, they drop the – all right, here's start the game. You guys ready? Yep, ready. Yep, drops the puck. Yep, right. nobody cares. Nope. Go, <laughs> everybody on the ice does not care no. that there is a puck live on the ice that the game just started. And everybody in Madison Square Garden there is like – Yes. Here's the angle from the top of MSG with the view of all 10 people. There's two guys, I think, on the Devils that thought maybe they weren't getting in a fight. Mm -hmm. They started skating away, and it was like, no, nope. oh, okay. Come We're on. all doing this thing. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Couldn't even fathom this in the NBA. As soon as the ball gets thrown up by one of those refs. Jersey's off. Thro <laughs> throws up. All right, here we go. Yo, and we're awesome. getting Imagine that NBA arena. The whole place would be like, oh, yeah. we got a seven-foot-tall dude. Fighting a seven foot two tall dude right mm -hmm. in front of us with a couple scrappy guards underneath. Mm -hmm. Coaches were chirping a little bit last night in hockey. Oh, yeah. They were maybe mm -hmm. going to go ahead and jump the glass as there was eight dudes in a penalty box. Here, here look at, uh, is that Peter? Yeah, that's Laviolette. Yeah, uh, in the middle there, just going, all right, well, yeah, I'm hearing what he's saying. What? Darren Pang is his name in the middle. Shout out to him. Great bald head. Mm -hmm. Fantastic bald head there. He's in the middle. Coaches almost started brawling. Hockey, listen. If you're not going to watch the sport, that coach has been around forever. Yeah, yes. that, that's Peter Lovulet. Hey, hey, what do you think this was? <laughs> yeah. What do you think was going to happen here? I, I love everything about it. I love everything. The sport, though, you know, and there's some hockey purists that get all pissed off. Like, that's not what hockey is. This ain't, oh, that's, there's no room for this in a game. I want to let you know as somebody that did grow up in hockey time, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and is a hockey fan. My 30th birthday was a Pittsburgh Penguins-themed birthday. I am a hockey fan, but I'm not a guy who can skate. Okay, and I uh, sure. didn't play, and I'm not from Canada, so I think mm -hmm. uh, you definitely kind of drop me. But you get me on the deck. Oh, okay, I got some clap bombs if you need it in this entire thing. The hockey purists don't necessarily love it. I want to let you know I'm love it. All about it. And it's great for the game, too. Yeah. Last night, there was a bunch of people that were like, I didn't know this was, this is how <laughs> hockey is. Mm -hmm. A lot of that on the internet's like, yes, hockey is old school, mm -hmm. but hockey is also 20, 30 miles an hour on ice, mm -hmm. flying around, dangles talent, competitive edge. Like, like everything about the sport itself is beautiful. The fact that they have that as an entree mm -hmm. is also a beautiful thing. PK, great to see you, man. You look great. Yeah. You look great. Thank you. How, Thank you. Thank uh, you, guys. Big story of the night, obviously. Rangers, Devils, all 10 men just fighting each other as soon as the puck drops. And even the ref knows it's coming. Let me get the hell out of the way here and let the boys do what they got to do. Four refs on the ice, five different fights happening. Obviously, things are going to happen. This all started three weeks ago, or why does something like this happen? And how often is this kind of the start of a hockey game for those that may, might not know, PK? Well, first of all, I mean, this is... <laughs> This is the most exciting thing in sports. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. I mean, I was supposed to be in the garden for this game last night, and I got stranded here in Nashville because of bad weather, and I was pissed that I missed the game. But th this is definitely some retribution for the hits on Segan, Dollar, and Bastion. And I, I, I thought, the, listen, these are old teammates of mine. So if you ask me personally, I don't want to see them ever get hit. But the one on Bastion I thought was a clean hit. He's a big guy. You know, the one on Segan, Dollar, questionable. But I, you know what? This is great for the game. We haven't seen something like this in the game in a really, really long time. And I thought, listen, 
it was a great game overall. You know, lots of goals in that game, lots of skill on display, but it boiled over. And you know what? Give Matt Rempe credit. He had to answer the bell, and he answered it. McDermott, this, this is the biggest guy he's fought since he's been in the league. The biggest guy and the most experienced guy that he's fought so far. So I thought he handled himself well. But the Battle of the Hudson's back. We need this in hockey. No question about it. This trumps everything in sports, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, Rangers, Devils, uh, known rivalry, I'd assume, for the proximity and everything like that? Well, I mean, listen, when I was playing in New Jersey, I was fighting in exhibition games. And you know this, Pat, as an athlete, nobody nobody gives a shit about exhibition games. But <laughs> when it comes to rivalries, when it's Rangers, Devils, Montreal Bruins, Rangers, Devils right now, I mean, we need this rivalry back. And I think it is back. Um, you know, we're going to see this more and more. And I think Peter Laviolette is the right coach for this. I think Travis Green's great. Uh, they played into it. But we need this. We need this emotion, this drama in hockey. It's an emotional sport. Let the guys go. If they want to fight, let them fight. It's not a problem. I'd, li- I'm not, I'd like to not see all those guys get kicked out of the game. But those are the rules of the game. Look, look at the players. Loving it. Rempe's loving it. The fans love it. This is this is what hockey's all about. This is a part of the sport that we still need to protect and we still need to celebrate. And uh, I'll tell you, look, there's respect. The guy's down. He's not hitting them. I love that. That's what you need. It's That's what the game's all about. And the players need to still have the flexibility to police the game themselves. There's still the, the game within the game. And I love what happened last night. I loved it. Who didn't like it? Here's all the penalties. Honestly. Here's all the penalties from last night's game, obviously. <laughs> Ten game misconduct. I mean, yeah. there's, there's yeah. a lot going on there to immediately start the game. And I think we talked to Bettman a little bit where we're like, hey, the fighting, good for the game. Mm-hmm. He goes, we don't need to staged fighting. He mm-hmm. said the staged fighting, not good. If it's going to happen naturally, I'll be excited to see his thoughts on that particular fight because that was comeuppance. That was, you know, like I'll be excited to see what his thoughts are on that actually and if there is like uh, reason or if it's just, hey, this is how this whole thing goes. Okay, so Pat, I, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to agree with Gary. The stage fighting, there's an element to it that we probably don't need in the game. But I'm going to tell you something. Which fan doesn't want to see Rampy and McDermott square up? Whole arena. MSG, whole arena like this. Like, as soon on. as it happens. Whole arena. I, yeah. I, I don't care. I don't I don't care like what you think. It's exciting to watch. So, you know, it's just you don't want it to take over the game and take away from the skill and what the NHL is all about. There's a ton of skill in the league right now. The game's at a better place than it's ever been in terms of the skill and the talent, but there's an element of toughness and testicular fortitude that goes into being a hockey player, and people need to understand that. People need to understand why these guys get paid millions of dollars to play this game because you know what? You put your body on the line every single time you step on that ice and anything can happen. And I I think that's the nature of the sport. We still got to protect it. I don't mind. If you're asking me, I don't mind tough guys, willing combatants, two willing guys that want to fight, let them go. Once they're done, we we drop the puck and let's go play. It's a beautiful part. Uh, It used to be of society. Now, I don't think in society it should be happening, but in hockey... Don't get me started, Pat. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. I mean, back in the day, it really... It always gets ruined because, like, yeah, you know. You settled mm-hmm. it as men. Everything, yeah, but then, you know, you got people that are much better fighters taking on people that aren't oh. fighters, yep. and then things happen, and then Bad. all of a sudden nobody's allowed to fight anymore. And we all agree. We all agree. But it's much better than some of the alternatives that are happening nowadays whenever what used to happen. Anyways, hockey, it's a beautiful thing. Let's talk about hockey, NHL as a whole. I heard the Pittsburgh Penguins are all the way back. Is that accurate? Who do we need to be watching? And are the Pens all the way back? I love everything about it, PK. Well, uh, Sidney Crosby, as long as that guy's still breathing and he's still healthy, anything is possible. I will not rule that guy out or the Pittsburgh Penguins until that final buzzer goes and they're either in the playoffs or they're not. Um, Sidney Crosby is still uh, amongst the best players in the world, if not one of the best or the best right now. Thank and you. we know what he's capable of doing. He can pull this team into the playoffs. And GOAT discussion, yeah, he's the GOAT of our generation. There's no question about it. He's in that conversation. We and when you have generational uh-huh. talents like him, you don't count them out until they're out. So the Pens going to make it or no? Big one tonight, right? Huge. Ooh, huge one tonight. Huge one tonight. And then Saturday on ESPN, we got Lightning and Pens as well. So all the games are big. 
But guys, can we imagine what that first round is going to be like in the National Hockey League playoffs? Like, there's going to be some good teams sent home. And I'm going to tell you right now that East is wide open. So any of these teams to get in, whether it's Pittsburgh, Detroit, the Islanders, like, I wouldn't want to play the Islanders if they make it in. I wouldn't want to play Washington. I wouldn't want to play Pittsburgh. I wouldn't want to play Philly. So there's no easy games from here on in, boys. Hey, Amen. That's 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 there what we're go. talking about. That's, that's right. why hockey is awesome. Now, speaking of teams in the East, go ahead, Tone. Yeah, PK, last time we talked to you, the Florida Panthers were an absolute wagon. Like, they could not be beat. Got a little bit cold, 2-7-1 and one in their last 10. Is this just like a, hey, let's get to the playoffs type situation? You think they'll be okay? Or is this legitimate concern for the Florida Panthers? Panthers are dead. Uh-oh. Oh, Not no. Good. It's too warm for hockey down there anyway. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right. Sorry Dude, about it. I, I can't wait for the playoffs to start for all these fans that are worried about the Florida Panthers. Whoa. I, I am not worried about those guys at all because – they're going to start eating nails any time now. And come playoff time, if you're not ready for the toughness, the physicality, and the mentality that those guys bring, every single shift, every single moment, um, you're going to get spanked. So I'm not worried about the Florida Panthers. It's also this, too. They had a long run last season. They've had injuries. I'm not making an excuse for them, but it's long. Like, it's tough. It's a grind to get through an 82-game season and then go through the playoffs. And remember... They had a horrible seeding last year. I know they, they had some, some good fortune in, at the beginning of the playoffs, but seven-game series, long road to the Stanley to the Stanley Cup final last year for them. So they got to preserve energy and save that. They're waiting to get to the playoffs. There's no question. It's hard in game 75, 76, when you know you're in the playoffs, to go out and compete. And remember, everybody's playing for something right now. There's no easy games. It, whether you're playing – Teams that are in the playoffs or not, everybody's playing for something. Guys are playing for jobs, so it's it, they're gonna they'll amp themselves up to that level that they need to be at come playoffs. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, they'll go out there and yeah, yep. mm-hmm. yeah they'll go out to Uter and <laughs> they'll go out there. Balut. Yeah, that's what they I'm, just probably need to get down to the elbow room in Fort Lauderdale yes. and tie one on for one night <laughs> oh, for a couple nights. Best place. That's what they need to do. Elbow, honestly. elbow room's a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> good spot. Great spot. Great spot. <laughs> that little Great area spot. there. That little area there is a really good Fort Lauderdale. Real nice. Real nice. And you know what? I like it crowded in there. I don't need yeah. much elbow room when I'm in there. I don't <laughs> mind it a little tight. You Cash like bop, only. You bop around a little bit. Okay. Because, uh, oh. Like, oh, oh, pal. Oh. oh, you get out? Oh, there. Yeah, yeah, you do. Kick the boots oh, around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ty's got a question for you. PK, you mentioned how every game right now, someone has something to play for. As like a casual fan who really starts paying attention once the playoffs start, are these the tightest playoff races we've seen in quite some time, or does it typically happen like this where we're literally going down to the last game of the season on both sides uh, of the NHL in terms of who's going to get in the playoffs and who's not? Let's let's be real about this. This is the best situation that we've seen the NHL in in a very long time, and I'd be, I'd be lying to say that Gary Bettman isn't smiling ear to ear right now because as a league, which league has this much parity in it? You know, the NFL, because of the way that, that that sport is played, you know, it's always played down to the final whistle, right? There's so many players, so many ways to impact the game, so many ways to win, so many ways to lose. You know, in hockey, right now, with where the game is at, all 30 teams are, 32 teams are in play. So, you know, I think that for the NHL, it's a, it's a godsend to have this type of parity. And I think we have to really appreciate it. I think also for the fans, knowing going into any season, regardless of where you're you're ranked or touted, you know that your team's got a chance. So who would have thought that Philly, Detroit, all these teams would be battling it out for Torts. a playoff spot come this time? So we wouldn't have known. Torts, unbelievable. What oh, about him? I don't like what's happening in Philly at all, but every time he speaks, I'm like, this dude. Yeah, he's the, the best. best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This dude needs a microphone more often. I know you're about to get into a car. We have one last question for you from Connor. Yeah, PK, yeah. I love that you're yeah. saying the East is wide open because last year it wasn't and the Bruins lost in the first round. But when we're talking about the West in the Oilers, they lose 5 nothing to Texas hockey last night. Are we on the brink of a McDavid threatening to leave like Nathan McKinnon oh. did with the Colorado Avalanche a few years before they – won the cup or is he going to be in Edmonton forever? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, when I look at that situation, I look at Sidney Crosby, right? And like Sidney Crosby, is he ever going to 
you know, leave Pittsburgh and go somewhere else. No, Pittsburgh's yeah, he's contention. not. Thanks, PK. Right? Let's right. move along with no, the no, answer no. here. And I'm not older. telling him, listen to me, I am not, I would never, ever tell a player okay, okay. to do that. You know, it's your career. Okay. Crosby's got cups. McDavid doesn't have any yet. So, you know, it's it's different, right? Crosby's in a situation where he's got his legacy and all that stuff. Um, with McDavid, he's got the same, but he's got no cups yet. So, uh, I, I think that it's going to be a personal decision to Connor and what he wants to do, but I think he really wants to make it work in Edmonton. I've never asked him about it, but I can usually tell by a player's body language and his attitude. You know, Connor, I'm sure, wants to make it work in Edmonton, and he's he's loved playing there since he's been there. He's tried really hard. You can see with his effort on the ice, his body language. You know, I'm sure he gets annoyed that they haven't been able to get over the hump, but, you know, he's he's been loyal to that team, and I respect that. Texas hockey, good team though. Oh yeah, good Especially team. with Otter cooking in a shutout, yeah. five nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. It's too warm in Texas too, for hockey. Sorry, you guys President's are done. President's trophy coming. No, uh, you guys are done. You guys are done. Cooked. How's Nashville? Did you do like Nashville last night or no? Dude, did I do Nashville last night? Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. I've been doing Nashville the past couple nights, and I came out here for work, but there's also some time for play. I mean, what about Broadway Street? It's unbelievable. <laughs> they just keep adding bars, adding restaurants, and these places are packed. Pat, they're packed. Monday, Tuesday night, you can't get a seat in any of these places. So Nashville, Where'd you go? Did you go by Blake I- Shelton's spot? Did you go by Old Red? You know what? Yesterday I was at Kid Rock Spot, which was up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Baby. Hell yeah. yeah. Up on the top. Oh. I was at Kid Rock Spot. Were you up on Let's the top? The Cadillac room? Yeah, were you up on the top? No, I stayed right at the bottom. I stayed at the bottom bar because oh. they had the live music going on. Yeah. And I had made a couple song requests, so we had some Morgan Wall yeah. going on in there. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Kid Rock Spot was nice. We went there yesterday. Um, the oh, my God. If you ever want a burger... And you're in Nashville. You got to go to Roberts on Broadway. Okay. I had a burger last night there for the first time. What time? What time? What time? It was what time? two nights ago. It was unbelievable. What time? What's that? What time did you have the burger? Oh, must have been must have been two a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 2 All right. I'm sure it's great. Oh. I'm sure that burger is phenomenal. Yeah. Anything yeah. really? Yeah. I had a, I had a few tequilas too. Yeah. 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 It was unbelievable. Yeah. Though. yeah. Well, safe tra- cheese curds, chicken fingers. <laughs> All right, safe travels. We appreciate you, PK. Thanks, guys. I love you, Matt. Yeah, Let's you go. too. See you later, Zeb. PK. Yeah, you yeah. go. Hey. Oh, it had to be oh. 2 a.m. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, all Cheese right. curds, tenders. Yeah, Any, the all of them. Anytime people are talking, giving food reviews after talking about being at bars and yep. requesting yeah. songs. Yeah. Exactly. Let's hear what state of mind you're in when you're mm-hmm. potentially eating the greasiest burger of all yeah. time. Uh-huh. How'd you feel the next day? Who knows? We used to have a gyro spot in Pittsburgh on the south side. Gyros? Oh, Hero, whatever the hell you call it. Where are you it's guys are from? Nah, it's the same gyro. thing. Uh, well, cares? it's actually called Nia Gyro. Yeah. That's what it's called. <laughs> we had two yeah. great ones. Yeah. Well, there was one that was right across the street from where Nick lived down there. and uh, Sammy's. You Sam's wake, Mediterranean yeah. spot, yeah. You wake up the next morning, you just got cucumber yep. taste in your nice. mouth. Pocky sauce. Yeah, Sammy's right. unbelievable. Cucumber's great. Must have had a great night last night, yeah. Must have really did it with that. Yeah. I mean, we used to go hero every night. But I'm sure if you would have told me to judge foods like a day out of that, I would have said gyro 3 a.m. Yeah, it's the best mm-hmm. food ever. Best food of all time. No, no offense, Roberts. I'm assuming your burgers are fantastic. Oh, yeah. A 2 a.m. taste bud is not necessarily the most truth-telling. As soon as PK said that he was an Elbow Room fan, you knew that that burger was late. Yeah, bingo. Mm-hmm. That's why. What time is this all happening? Elbow Room is a great spot. That is. That is. And if you've ever been to Elbow Room, you, anybody else that's like openly talking about Elbow Room, you're like, all right, yeah. I know. Okay. How, this yeah. guy. Cool. I know what type of life <laughs> yeah. you're living. Yeah. I know what type of life you're living. Uh, hockey is <laughs> awesome. Hockey's in the middle of it right now. It feels like you're in a great spot, Nick. Uh, he said Gary Bettman's smiling ear to ear. Now, we don't know if suits have the capability of getting ear to ear, but Gary Bettman and hockey seem to be on the uprise, uptick right now, Nick. Everything's pointing upwards, Pat. The playoffs are coming down to these tight, tight races on both the East and the West. The East is a little more uh, top-heavy. The West is loaded from top to bottom. They got teams in every spot that can make a run. The East, you would look at players like Boston, what? Carolina, the Rangers, and Florida to really mm-hmm. push forward and, and make a run to the Cup. And the Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, yeah. Yeah. I hope yeah. Massive game tonight. Got to win tonight. 
Washington? Mm-hmm. Yes. Washington? In Washington. Washington. That, that used to be a big rivalry. He was, oh, yeah. He was mentioning rivalries and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Huge. Washington used to be in Pittsburgh because it was Ovi and Sid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we know how well Sid's playing this year. Ovi had a terrible start to the season, but he's back now. He's of been course. scoring. In, in, he's, he had like six does. straight games with goals. He's he's lighting it up again. He's back in his office just skating down the, yeah. the entire rink like mm-hmm. this. Go ahead. Feed him. Feed him. Feed him. Feed him, clap ball. Yeah, top goal. shelf. Boom. If he goal. keeps going like this, he will break Gretzky's all-time goal record next season. Which is Let's phenomenal. Go. Nobody thought that would get uh-huh. broken. And once again, for Wayne Gretzky, for those that just want to compare other athletes to Wayne Gretzky, <laughs> if you were to get rid of all of his goals, he would still lead the history of the NHL in points. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. If you were just to get rid of his goals, which count towards the points, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Goals. If you were to get rid of one half of them, he would still – be the all-time. Mm-hmm. That's absurd. Was that before, yeah. like, the two assists? Was Gretzky before that, No. Nick? No, no, was, no. He's no, definitely no, no. getting a second assist. Okay, okay. Yeah, just right. making sure. Definitely. I mean. Because well, it could have been even That more. is one of the best things about hockey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is, like, you just toss it to nice a little playmate. Yeah, you're going to be yeah. 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 And then somebody goes in there and they pass it and then there's yep. a goal. It's like, yeah, Here we second go, assist. Boy. Shot that goes off somebody and in. Hockey's sweet. Ten people fighting started. That is fantastic.